So we'll redo that again. But Auckland 8, dare to be great. Here with you, Glad Rap Channel, Isaac Savage, and the champ himself, Shay, Mr. Business Brock. We're commentating tonight for this eight-man eliminator. We've just had Harley Love, I guess, go through to the next round via uh, walkover because his opponent did not show up. But, Shay, you talked about this fight earlier. These two would have met later down on the track, but they're meeting tonight. Yeah, well, they had to be up there in the, you know, in the upper half of the... Know, if, if the tournament was seeded, I would believe that they would have been on the upper half. Both skilled fighters. I mean, Tej, Tej Singh, he is the WBA Oceania champ, which he only just recently won as well. I didn't take nothing away from Kerry Davis. He's a Brit born, but now part of, uh, you know, uh, he's a pretty, pretty solid and stable name here in the New Zealand fight scene. And he certainly can move. He's got some boxing skills. He's fought some of the best New Zealand fighters. And he brings a different style to New Zealand boxing as well, doesn't he, Shay? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going we're gonna to see an interesting fight here. I mean, Clash of Styles. We have the uh, textbook, uh, you know, puncher boxer in uh, Kerry Davies. And then we have the Bulldog Comfort Style, Tej Singh. Really looking forward to this. Like you said earlier, these guys are both experienced boxers. Cowboy, the Brit, now I guess a Kiwi, living, and they're living here in New Zealand, in the white shorts, and Tej, Tej Singh in the black shorts. Kerry Dave is also one of the um, trainers at the Red Line Gym there, run by Vasco. We're certainly going to hear Vasco tonight. He's probably one of the loudest corner men in, uh, in the New Zealand boxing scene and certainly shows his support when all his guys are thrown down. Kerry keeping away. You know. Yeah, just, just as we thought, we, you know, we got um, Singh coming forward. Oh, we got Kerry landing nice shots, you know, straight down the middle as well, trying to, on the back foot, trying to keep Singh off of him. And Singh not giving him any room at all. Charging forward, trying yeah, to find that, that KO up. shot. But Cowboy so looking in control, you know, he's jabbing out, getting out, in and out. Mm. Well, you see Davies, you know, opting to clinch there, you know, give himself a little bit of break. He can't get himself any room, so he's going to tie, tie his man up. Look at the angles. Look, he throws a shot, then moves to the left, right. He's throwing beautifully, but Singh's thinking, no, I don't want to take any more of this. I'm going to get you back. And he's got some heavy hands on him as well. You know, when you see him land his shots, they, do, they, they look like they, you know, they noticed. He just doesn't seem to have the fluidity, though, that uh, Cowboy has tonight. Although, if he does land one of those shots, it could be lights out. Well, for, that's the thing with the Cowboy. power punches. You know, you only need to land there one to shock your opponent. And even then, you know, even if your opponent's catching him on the gloves, you know, they can feel your power. That sometimes takes the confidence away from your opponent if you are the power puncher, and especially coming forward the way he does relentlessly. You know, we talk about conserving energy and trying to uh, get the easiest option through to the final and this looks like a really tough fight for both guys so far I mean we're, we're getting into the latter part of round one but it's not going to be a, a fight that gets stopped too early on this could go the distance the way these guys are fighting well yeah, it, it's going just as we predicted Tej is coming forward relentlessly stalking breaking down his opponent and then you have Davies there 
on the back foot, but sharp with his boxing skills. And about to use, you know, he's controlling it a little bit there at the beginning of the round, but like I said, it, it, it's taxing, it's tolling on your fitness if you're constantly on the back foot. And that's exactly what um, Tej is doing. He's coming forward, pressure, constant pressure. We were going to see um, the real mental fortitude of these fighters tonight is when they've all done their eliminator rounds and it comes to round two. Then obviously the Semi-finals final. Semi-finals and the finals, definitely. That's when we see the true contender come out. We are trying to find you know, the, the next contender for the IBO Australasian uh, regional title. So... Look, with, they'll be so worthy of uh, having a shot at that, like we said earlier, to go through nine rounds, three men in one night. It's, just, um, un- it's absolutely unbelievable and uh, totally worthy of that shot should they make it through. Wow, the pressure. That, the pressure that uh, Singh applied there, especially to the later um, end of the round, it, it, is, it looks like it's worrying Kiri. He doesn't, he doesn't really be unsure what to do with it. And it's, it's not even, you know, the, the punches or the barrage of punches that he going, you know, just constantly staying in his face, not giving him any space to think or, you know, come back with an offense of his own. Just that alone, you know, that, that pressure alone has, has got to be hard to take. And well, yeah, as you know firsthand, even though it might not look like much, you're right, that constant come forward pressure when you're trying to fight someone off, does take energy and you can see Kiri's really working for it. he probably is up up on the points but he's certainly working for that for that win isn't he because he's having to keep away from that constant sort of walk down bullying tactic of yep. Tej yep. Yeah, you guys stick around and see what the corners have told them see what wisdom they get from their corners how the second round plays out so they're coming forward like a Mike Tyson type Bob and, Bob and Weave is he going to find that shot? Well, it looks Tyson? like he just picked it up another gear and he's starting to land shots. Really let his hands go. Finding his spots. Kerry having no choice but to tie up. And that's the best way to bring it to a technical boxer, isn't it, Shay? If you do face a technical boxer, all you really have to do if you can't be technical back is be aggressive, oh, come yeah. forward. He's close just that got distance. that bully style at the moment. And, well, Kerry's, Kerry Davies not having too much luck in this opening round. It's just that constant pressure as well. Even though Kerry's landing the shots, they're not, they're not really upsetting Tej that much. Tej no, he's got, a, he's got a, uh, a granite jaw, and it doesn't look like he's going to get rocked anytime soon. He's just bullying Kerry, just constantly coming forward. Even though Kerry is throwing the shots, getting out of the way, he is uh, starting to struggle with this pressure and onslaught here from Tej. Oh, yeah. Kerry... He looks good. He, he's doing everything, everything right um, to the textbook. But you know, there's, there's there's times when you have to throw the book away and you know improvise. And you know, this this fight is almost reminiscent of what the a semi or the final should have been. Yet we're being treated to this first up. Uh, someone has to be eliminated, and I can't quite call who's going to be. Oh, unfortunately, there only can be one winner of this tournament, one contender for the IBO title. So let's. Um, Singh is really going to work now. And for those that didn't know who Tej Singh was, they will know now after this performance. He's certainly coming forward and making Kerry work for it, if not taking over this round, Shay. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like I said, take nothing away from Kerry. He's, you know, he's got that textbook style, but he just can't deal with the pressure that's coming towards him right now. You talk about that textbook style, but he's oh, starting to take shots. Caught. Is he starting to take more than he can uh, can handle there, Shay? He's taking a few shots now. Well, the ref, John Conway, is having a good look at this one. Tej relentless sinking those body shots and head and shots. And there's been no no reply from Kerry Davies, so I'll be interested to see when John Conway is going to step in. No, not just yeah. This is a pro bout, and Kerry looks, looks like he does have a lot more fight left in him. But he well, we is, know he's a tough customer. He did go to distance with oh. Ruben Webster. Oh, oh, and that is it. Oh my goodness, Tej Singh what a eliminates Kerry in round number. 
too. I'm speechless. I I didn't know a lot about Tej before this, but I certainly do now, and he is one worthy contender, Shay. Absolutely. While he does currently hold the WBA Oceana um, title, like I alluded to earlier, and Vasco, just the coach of Kerry Davis, going over there and um, showing his respect to his uh, opponent, congratulating him on the win. You know, and the thing is, Tej didn't, you know, he wasn't flashy, he didn't do any Mayweather type moves, he just came forward nice right. and simple and smashed his way through to it's a just dominant relent, victory. That relentless pressure, and he's constantly on the front foot, and it's just, just his opponent, that Kerry Davies, didn't know how to deal with that. So it'll be interesting to see a um, well, potential fight with him and Harley Love now. Yes. We didn't oh. get to see much, well, anything really of Hardy Love, just an introduction. And how much of that is an advantage, right? How advantageous is it going through without even fighting to the elimination round? Well, you can, you can call it on either end. You know, he hasn't had that blowout that he may have needed going into the semifinals, whereas Tej has. You know, I would love to see Tej and Harley fight because Harley uh, coming up against such a strong, dominant opponent. It'd be interesting to see how he works the angles, uh, applies the pressure, and how those styles match up. Introducing first, making her way to the ring. 